General Butt Naked. While his name may sound funny to us now, the mere mention of him was enough to strike fear into the hearts of his enemies and citizens of Liberia alike. Had you come across him during the first Liberian civil war, you'd wish you haven't. But now he's widely loved by his community and claims to be a changed man. To understand Mr. Butt Naked, we have to first understand what was going on in Liberia at the time. Liberia used to be an American colony where they sent African slaves in order to be free. But once in Liberia, these new American Liberians would go on to enslave the Africans already living there and continue to oppress them. In 1980, Samuel Kanyan Doe wanted to bring an end to foreign rule and would go on to lead a coup d'etat against American Liberian President William Tolbert. After Samuel Doe took over, he had William alongside other cabinet members placed in court where they were all found guilty on charges of treason and would be sentenced to death by firing squad. The execution was highly publicized on live television where you can see many of the Liberians being joyful about this change, not knowing that was only going to take a turn for the worse from here. Once Samuel was in power, he'd have his friends and other important members of his tribe in parliament position. Positions, many who had no experience in these positions or any sort of formal education. With the exception of Charles Taylor, who studied economics while in America. More on him later. As most third war leaders go on to do, Samuel became very corrupt and instead of distributing the country's funds for better schools, jobs and so on, he instead invested into himself. Most of his parliament remained loyal to Samuel as they were becoming very rich alongside him. But after a while, stealing from the Liberians wasn't enough for Samuel. He also started to cut the salaries of the people he'd placed in power. Taylor, not very happy about his funds being taken away, decided to take what was left and flee to America. Samuel Doe ordered that Taylor be arrested for embezzlement and whilst in America, Taylor was placed behind bars. But not for long as he'd escaped from prison and returned to the jungles of Liberia to start guerrilla infantry. Taylor would go on to form the National Patriotic Front of Liberia, or DNPFL, and try to put an end to Samuel's regime, starting the first Liberian civil war. This gave rise to many warlords who would compete for power with some very questionable names, such as General Bin Laden, General Rambo, General Mosquito, his arch nemesis General Mosquito Spray, General Rast, and the most infamous and feared of them all, General Butt Naked. Now on to Mr. Butt Naked himself. Joshua Milton Blahi was chosen to be the high priest for the Crown people at age 11. And during one of his many human sacrifices, he was visited by a demon that told him that as long as he continues the human sacrifices, he will be an invincible warrior. Samuel Doe happened to be part of the Crown tribe that Mr. Butt Naked was the high priest of. And since the war was brewing, Butt Naked had to come to assist Samuel as a warrior and high priest. Even with all the spiritual powers that this level 98 high priest possessed, he couldn't go into battle by himself. He needed an army. So General Butt Naked would go on scouting to form his new regiment, which would be known as the Butt Naked Commandos. His method of recruitment was to literally take random children of the streets and groom them, telling them that he wants them to become great soldiers alongside him. After taking them to his camp, the training process would begin, where Butt Naked would show them Hollywood films where soldiers are killed, and then show them other movies that had the same actors as soldiers being alive, telling them that the same thing happens on the battlefront. When they kill someone, they just go to live in another movie. Other than removing any sympathy left in this children, you may wonder as to what the rest of the training consisted of. Either they maybe how to perform a human sacrifice, the answer is pretty much none. I swear, I sat through hours of threats from this conflict and it's like no one knows how to shoot a gun. You'd see people firing without aiming, shooting randomly and they were firing above their heads. It's like they maxed out on style points instead of efficiency. Talking about style, you may be wondering as to what these soldiers were wearing. Well, the answer varies quite widely. Some of them living up to the name, charging into battle butt naked, while we had other soldiers cross-dressing and wearing colourful wigs. And there was even this guy who'd go on the battlefield stabbing motherfuckers as discount Batman. Now why children in particular? The butt naked commandos also consisted of adults, but general butt naked preferred children as they were more impressionable and could focus completely on just fighting and didn't have to worry about all these pesky things such as family and morals. Once he had his troops, general butt naked was ready for battle. But since he was the high priest in his religion, this normally meant that he couldn't also double as a soldier. So in order to appease his gods, he'd sacrifice the child before going into battle by cutting them open and ripping their heart out as he was still beating. General Butt Naked alongside his Butt Naked commandos would all proceed to then eat this child's heart as they believed that doing so made them immune to bullets. When this wasn't enough to uplift the morale of his soldiers, he'd also supply his troops with heroin and cocaine. General Butt Naked was also in business with the cartel. He traded Liberian gold and diamonds in exchange for weapons and drugs. You may be wondering as to why naked. To call the general himself, it wasn't just psychological, but also means of displaying his power. When he was naked, he'd disappear faster. When he was naked, he'd activate his spiritual powers faster. You may find the idea of a naked general charging into battle to be something quite funny. 
by the Bad Naked Commandos were one of the most feared factions during the Liberian Civil War, purely because of how insane they were. They'd kill anyone they come across, and if not, they'd cripple, torture, and even rape rebels as well as civilians. No one was spared, and if his troops did not reciprocate the mayhem, they would be brought into questioning by the general, and we can all imagine how that would go. The mere mention of General Bar Naked coming into town was enough to send people running for their lives. Mothers would hide their children into barrels to avoid being sacrificed. Men would retreat with their weapons, as the stories of Bar Naked turned them into a mythical creature. People believed that Mr. Bar Naked was immune to any form of attacks. Bullets, knife wounds, and even rockets could not harm the general. And even the general himself believed in these things. Mr. Bar Naked would charge at his enemies in a zigzag motion with his sandals, amulet, gun, his colors, and literally nothing else. Bar Naked preferred to charge towards his enemies and kill them with his colors, as he believed that doing so, his deity would claim the souls of his enemies when doing it. As Taylor's troops were gaining more control over Liberia, they managed to circle Monrovia, the capital, and capture President Samuel Doe, torturing and executing him on camera. However, this was not enough to stop General Bar Naked and his commandos. They continued their mayhem up until Mr. Bar Naked had a vision from Jesus Christ himself. As Bar Naked was committing another one of his many child sacrifices, he'd hear the AT talk to him. Mr. Bar Naked claims that when he turned around to see who he was, he'd see a man levitating and wearing a white robe. Bar Naked said that his presence was too overwhelming to look at him directly, but he just knew that it was Jesus Christ himself. Bar Naked was then given the option to either repent and leave or refuse and die. Mr. Bar Naked was very confused by this. But a few days later, some Jehovah's Witness bypassed an entire military camp and appeared outside the general's room to spread the good word of Jesus. Bar Naked would go on to attend one of the church ceremonies. And that's how a cannibalistic warlord who commit some of the worst atrocities Africa has ever seen became an evangelist and changed his name to Joshua. If you ever have a spare two hours, you should definitely check out the demonic confessions of General Bar Naked. Soon enough, a ceasefire was called and Joshua fled to neighboring countries. During the ceasefire, a poll was held to determine who would be the next leader of Liberia. Charles Taylor ran his own campaign under the slogan, He killed my ma, he killed my pa, but I will vote for him. And it works! People voted for Taylor, mainly because they were worried that if he doesn't win, the war would continue. But two years after Taylor was put into power, the war would start yet again. Now back onto Joshua. The man would travel across different refugee camps all across Western Africa, trying to ask his victims for forgiveness in a very awkward manner. You have to forgive me, man. Some found in themselves to forgive him, some wanted to kill him. As expected, Joshua would receive death threats on a daily basis, and some of them even coming from members of the Crown tribe, as many of the members felt that Joshua has abandoned them. After the situation in Liberia calmed down, Joshua would return back home with a new mission. That being, to spread the word of God. Joshua would return to Liberia as an evangelist preacher, and surprisingly would own up to all the crimes he's committed. In 2008, Joshua would appear before the Liberian Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which sought out to punish war criminals, and he'd confess to everything he's done. Joshua went on to live television, telling everyone about how he'd rape and cannibalize innocent children and that he's responsible for at least 20,000 deaths. The entire country was shocked by the news, with half of Liberia wanting Joshua to face justice and be tried for his war crimes, and with the other half admiring his honesty and believing that he was truly a changed man. In a surprising turn of events, the TRC found Joshua not guilty of war crimes, and he was given amnesty. So what is Joshua up to today then? Well, he can still be seen giving sermons, making it his mission to try to gain forgiveness from everyone he wronged, and even runs a rehabilitation center where he takes ex-child soldiers from the slums of Liberia and tries to get them off drugs and turn them into functioning members of society. What do you think about this entire situation? I mean, on one hand, Joshua killed more than 20,000 people, crippled, tortured, and raped many more, not to mention sacrificed innocent children. But on the other hand, he now claims to be a changed man. He owned up to all the crimes he's committed, and he's actively helping out ex-child soldiers who the government completely forgot about. Do you think that a man who has committed such atrocities can ever be forgiven? Drop your opinions down below. But anyways, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Add me on my Instagram and TikTok at nigger.wave with a free at the end. Check out my Redbubble store at nigger shop. All links in the description. But yeah, this was Nigger, and I'm out.